نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و اهل العقدت من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طیبا و عملا متقبلا اللہم الہمنا رشدا و عزنا من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارنا الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارنا الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ سورة النساء ورس 78 اینما تکونو یدرکم الموت ولو قنتم فی بروج مشیدہ Wherever you may be death will overtake you even if you should be within the towers of lofty construction Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about and mentioning about a reality of life that is death. Death is a reality of life. It is a bitter reality of life. It is an unrefutable truth which has to be accepted by all. Every living thing will taste death sooner or later with ease or in distress. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has thrice mentioned in Quran Kullu nafsin zaikatul maut. Surah Al-Imran verse 185 Allah says Kullu nafsin zaikatul mauti وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ عَجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُحْسِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَاسْ وَمَا الْحَيَاتُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ Every human is bound to taste death. And on the day of resurrection, you will be repaid in full for all your deeds. He who shall be saved from hell and entered into Jannah will be successful for the life of this world is not but just an illusion. Verse 35 of Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again says, Kullu nafsin zahaykatul maut wa nabluwakum bisharri wal khayri fitnatan wa ilayna turji'oon Every human will taste death and we will put you into trial with good and bad situations and you will but return to us. Surah Ankabut, verse 57, Allah repeats, Kullu nafsin zahaykatul mawti summa ilayna turja'oon All humans will have to taste death and then you will all be returned to Allah. The life of each one of us, each one of us, our life is just a matter of a single meeting with Malikul Maut, the death angel. As Allah says, Surah An'am, verse 61, Wa is jaa ahadukumul mawdu, tawaffat rusuluna wa hum la yufarritun. That when the death approaches our messenger causes him to die and they do not overlook. No one has ever been able to make him go back. No one has ever been able to defeat him, impress him, overpower him, seize him or convince him to return. He has always been the winner and he's always done what he has been ordered. The strongest of wrestlers, the richest of men, the bravest of warriors, 
the most powerful of all rulers, no one could and no one will be able to stop him. He takes the soul for which, when, where he has been ordered. He takes the soul and no other than the soul he has been ordered to take. He comes he comes in a home to take away the soul of a 17 year, 17 year old young boy in a house where there is a 97 year old grandpa all paradise head down and has been waiting and longing for death since the last 20 years but he leaves behind the grandpa and he takes the grandson as he was ordered to. We've seen, we've all seen parents howl and cry and beg but he takes away the child he was ordered to. We've seen the daughters praying and begging. We've seen the sons asking all the medical consultants and the doctors to take whatever they want to at whatever cost to save their mamas, to save their father. But nothing would stop him to perform his task. The best of consultants, the best of medical facilities, the best of ventilators, the best of life-saving drugs, money being spent away like anything, but nothing can or nothing will save the person or the soul from departing. So this is the actual reality of life. We all need to remember. And what after the soul departs? The person, the person after death, the body of the deceased of whose soul has been departed lies speechless, helpless, motionless in his own house. All his possessions, his belongings, all his dear things, all his valuables are around. But now they don't belong to him who takes, who breaks, who throws. He doesn't know of. He can't stop them. He can't prevent anybody from taking, breaking or throwing his possessions or belongings. The person can't even budge an inch, can't even hear the azan, can't even answer the azan, can't even get up and offer salah, can't even spend from his wealth, can't make charity in the path of Allah. That is why Allah says, Allah says, Surah Al-Baqarah 254 words, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu anfiku mimma razaqnaakum min qabli an yaktiya yawmun la bayyun fihi wala hullatun wala shifa'atun wal kafiruna humuz walimun O believers, O believers spent in the path of Allah from the sustenance which you have been provided before the day comes. Spend before the day comes when there will be no bargaining, there will be no friendships and there will be no intercession. Those who deny are the wrongdoers or the evildoers. Allahumma la taj'alna binkum. And that is why Prophet also has been heard saying in a hadith reported in Bukhari, Prophet said, Spend, spend in the path of Allah before death attends you. And then you start saying, Give this to such and such and give this to such and such. O son of Adam, the property then will not be yours, it will be your heirs. What happens when the person's soul departs? So quickly, the best of dresses, the best of the person's dresses, designers, starched, ironed, all hung up in the cabinets are left behind. 
And what, what is the person, what is this deceased person made to wear that woman? That woman? She will be she will be now clad in the coffin ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The five pieces of plain white cotton. That day she will be dressed up in what Allah and the Prophet ﷺ has ordered us to. But when she was she was alive, when she was healthy, when she was young or even when she was old, she used to dress up herself. And then she used to dress up herself against the orders and the dress code of Islam. Till when? Till when could she do that? Till today. Till the time of death. So now just think. Just think and answer. Who is sensible? Who is wise? Surely the one who surrendered. Surely the one who submitted with free will and the choice accepted the dress code ordered by Allah. Sensible is the one, wisest is the one who out of will, who out of wish adopts and opts for Allah's player and leaves and shuns the self player. The person whose soul has departed leaves behind all forms of the best beddings and linens and sheets and draperies and upholsteries, the four poster beds. And now, and now she'll be laid on what? She'll be laid on, she'll be carried on. A simple wooden or a metal cradle or a bed with all the latest models of cars in the garage, in the drive, everything, one after the other, the latest models of all the cars, stranding, waiting in the drive. But now this time, today, the person, her body is put in an ambulance. This ambulance is going to carry her from her house, never to return, ever to return her own, her near ones, her dear ones, her dear sisters, her daughters, her granddaughters bathed her up. They washed, they poured camphor, camphor on her body. They clothed her in the coffin. Her sons, her brothers, her grandsons, they take her to the graveyard. And the grave is ready. They lay her down. They lay her down in the floor of the grave. And they fill up the grave with this grave with the soil, leaving her behind. Alone. Solitude. In the quietness, in the darkness of that grave. That is why. That is why Prophet Wasallam said, O son of Adam, don't look at the world with lust. Don't you look at the world with lust. The insects of the grave will start with the eye. Allah says in Quran, Allah warns in Quran, Surah Tukathur, Al-Haqumu Takasru Hatta Zuratamul Maqabir. And Prophet ﷺ, Hazrat Abu Huraira who says, he narrates that Prophet ﷺ said that bondsman's condition is that even if he has two valleys of gold, even if he possesses, he owns, he is the master of two valleys of gold, he would still desire for the third. O son of Adam, only the soil of the grave will fill your belly. Oh Allah, save us, save us from the lust, from the desire, from the, for the blind love of this world, its wealth, its riches. Oh Allah, bless us, bless us, 
the fear of Allah and help us prepare for the hereafter. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Muslim the Prophet said a person says my wealth my wealth that is he's just bothered about and he is just concerned about the primary priority and the primary preferences he says my wealth my treasure O son of Adam from your wealth from your treasures your share of the wealth is what you wear and you make it old you eat and you finish it you consume it up or what you spend as charity what you spend as charity in the path of Allah and make it a provision for your hereafter what is our of our wealth is what we have invested in what I generally call as the Akhira investment bank the Akhira investment bank is a bank which gives a sure shot which is bound to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised Ashra Amsaliha a minimum of sure shot pre-decided 10 times profit and maybe all the good deeds done in Ramadan it may exceed to 70 times and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ أَمْبَتَتْ سَبَى سَنَابِلَ فِي قُلِّ ثُمْوِلَةٍ مِيَةَ حَبَّةٍ A minimum of 700 times. A minimum of 700 times. And even the words of Prophet ﷺ promise that when some of you spend charity, when some of you spend charity in the path of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges it and accepts it with his right hand and protects it and raises it till it grows, till it multiplies and it becomes as colossal and as huge as a mountain. And Prophet ﷺ has promised, save yourselves from the fire of hell may it be by spending a portion of a date remember we are just we can just spend we can just spend and invest in this Akhra investment bank till we are alive Prophet said that when a man dies his deeds will finish his deeds will finish. We all know. The person can't do anything now. All his deeds will finish. Only three deeds will continue in reward. We all need to... <coughs> we all need to remember and we all need to make a workout of all these three deeds. The three deeds which will continue in reward are number one, the productive the profitable knowledge we passed on to others the second is the charity a person spends in the path of Allah and the third is the righteous and the pious children a person leaves behind who keep on praying and asking for the father or the mother's forgiveness death is extremely painful as Prophet Sallallahu told Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her O oh Aisha the, turmo the turmoils of death are very distressing and that is why he taught us to recite the words Allahumma a'inni ala ghamaratil maut wa sakaratil maut I'll say that again remember this and supplicate in these words very frequently Allahumma a'inni ala umaratil maut wa sakaratil maut Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has instructed the believers to 
remember death very often and remembrance of death is desirable Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in Ibn Majah the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he instructed he suggested and this is an instruction and suggestion for all of us remember mention or talk about the killer of joy death very frequently Hazrat Ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in Ibn Majah that he says that I was sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and an Ansari came and after saying compliments to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said O Prophet of Allah who among the believers is most excellent Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered who bears excellent moral characters The person again asked who among the believers is the wisest Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said one who remembers death frequently and prepares for the life after death you know i talk about these things about hell about jannah about death about the torments of the grave i talk about this i narrate all this not to scare off people i don't do this for the purpose of scaring off people or to terrifying people but i merely do this solely it is all narrated to inform to inform well in time beforehand in advance to help us understand the stages of the endless journey we will start so that we may collect the provision we make preparations for the journey of hereafter that is the only and the sole reason of narrating all these things so the wisest person is he who remembers who talks about who mentions about death very frequently and then the wisest and the most far fetched or the far sighted is he who prepares for the life here after allahumma ja'alna minhum hasat abdullah bin umar radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in tabrani that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked he himself asked do you know who among the people is most prudent and wise again prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said one who remembers death the most and who is most keen to prepare for it such people are the wisest and they will be rewarded with the honor of the world and the life hereafter then hasan anas radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports that people came and they told prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were talking about a companion and they mentioned about his worship that how he he is very he works very hard and he strives how he works in his worships prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam immediately asked how much does this companion of yours remember death they said we've never heard him talk about death prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said then this friend of yours has not attained the desired ranks of worships similarly has a sahal bin sa'ad sa'adi radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was mentioned about one of his companions who had passed away and that he the uh, companions were mentioning that he used to worship and he used to work very hard worshiping for allah and when they they became silent prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam again asked did he remember death they said no then he then he asked did he stop himself from the worldly desires they said no the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then said then he had not attained the desired ranks of his worship so to be a true believer and then to achieve the correct and the desired ranks of a believer's worship we need to remember to talk about and to mention death very frequently 
and then to make preparation about the hereafter. Now, how is the death of a believer and how is the death and what are the conditions at the time of death of a known believer? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Anfal, verse number 50, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذَا يَتَفَفَّ الَّذِينَ قَفَرُوا الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَضْرِبُونَ وُجُوهَهُمْ وَأَدْبَارَهُمْ وَذُوقُوا أَذَابَ الْحَرِيقِ If only you could see how the angels receive those who disbelieve, hitting them on their faces, astaghfirullah rabbi, hitting them on their faces and their backs and scolding them, saying what? Zuhu adhab al harik Taste the punishment of burn. Surah Muhammad, verse 27, Allah says, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا تَوَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَطْرِبُونَ وَجُوهَهُمْ وَأَدْبَارَهُمْ Then how will it be with them when the angels gather them, hitting their faces and their backs? How is, how are all the stages of a person who is a non-believer, who is a transgressor, who is a hypocrite. Hazrat Bara bin Azib ta'ala and who reports that we had joined a funeral of a companion who was who was an Ansari and the Prophet also came over and when we reached the graveyard, the grave was uh, being dug and it was not ready yet so the Prophet sat down and we also sat around him silently and uh, Prophet ﷺ was holding a stick and he began scraping the earth with it and suddenly he raised his head and he said seek shelter of Allah from the torments of grave seek shelter of Allah from the torments of grave seek shelter of Allah from the torments of grave and then he started narrating the happenings at the time of the death he said that when a non-believer is about to leave the world and set out to hereafter, then who comes? Black-faced angels. They have, they have very horrifying faces, and they have with them, they have with them an awfully smelling and a filthy sack cloth. And all this group of angels. They sit far away from the person and the angel of death, Israel, comes close to the head side of the patient, of the person and he says, O oh, wicked soul. So he addresses the soul directly. O oh, wicked soul, leave the body and set out to the anger and the wrath of your Allah. And listening this, what happens is the soul retreats in the body. And then it gets sticks up and it clings to the body. And the angel then draws it out as an iron bar is dragged out of wet cloth or wet cotton. The other angels then do not let the, the soul be in the hands of Israel and they take up the wicked soul and they wrap it up in that filthy sackcloth and then Prophet said, it gives out the most offensive smell. It gives out the most offensive smell on the face of the earth. And from everywhere, when they pass carrying this soul, the angels ask them, whose wicked soul is this? And they answer in disrespect. It is the soul of such and such wicked person and they give it the worst names then the soul is brought to the heaven to the sky of the world and they they knock at the door they request the door to be opened but the angels of this door they refuse to open the door for this wicked soul and saying that that the angels of the heaven, the first sky, they refuse to open the door. Prophet ﷺ recited verse 40 of Surah Al-Araf. 
they who deny our revelations and scorn them for them the gates of heaven will not be opened nor they will nor will they enter the gardens until and unless the camel goes through the needle's eye that is that as much as it is like next to impossible like it is next to impossible that a camel can go through or it can pass through the needle's eye so similarly it is next to impossible that people who disobey who reject the verses of Allah and the teachings of Quran and Hadith and Sunnah it is like next to impossible that the doors of heaven will be open for them or they will not it is next to impossible that they will enter into jannah Allahumma la taj'alna minhum and then the prophet has him said that Allah orders for this soul for whom the doors of the heaven are not being opened then Allah orders enter its name in the register of sijin sijin is what it is a place it is a prison it is an office in the deepest portions under the earth where the souls and where the deeds of the evil doers of the disbelievers of the hypocrites of the transgressors of the polytheists will be dumped and will be will be imprisoned Allah will say enter its name in the registers of sijin and then it is dashed down to the ground most confidently and hence and hence it is imprisoned in sijin because you know what the person was an evil doer and all his evil deeds were deposited were collected were stored were gathered every mondays and every thursdays in sijin so now the evil soul will also be collected with the evil deeds in the prison of sijin and totally contrary to the whole situation like totally 180 degrees opposite situation is going to be when there's the death time of death of the believer hazrat bara bin azib radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in mustad ahmad that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now narrated what for the believer he said that when a believer is to leave this world for here after the angels which are going to come to receive the soul are like what they have beautiful shining and glowing faces and they will be clad in clean and pure white dresses and they will have a soft silken scented cloth from the jannah and all this group of angels with the, they will sit at a distance from the person and then the angel of death israel will come and sit at the head end of the believer and say o oh, holy soul allahumma ja'alna minhum oh allah make us one of these oh allah make us one of these the angel israel will come and will address this the believer from the head end and will say O oh, holy soul O oh, pious soul leave the body and set out to the forgiveness and happiness from Allah so the soul and the person will be given the good news of forgiveness and the pleasure of Allah and hence the soul will leave the body as softly as easily as smoothly like here in this hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave the example that as water flows out easily out of the out of the bag of water and in another place prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been reported <coughs> to give the example like the scent or the perfume or the smell of a perfume or a smell flows easily out of the bottle where the where the lid is taken off so the soul will easily come out and the soul the angels will take it 
from angel Jibrail, the group of angels who had accompanied the death angel, they will take it from the hands of the death angel and uh, then they will wrap it up in that soft silken scented sheet and then Prophet said the sheet itself will make it fragrant with the sense of paradise and then the soul will give out the smell of the best musk found on the surface of the earth and the angels will respectfully with all the protocol and with all the honor and the respect they will carry the soul to the sky and on their way whenever the angels will meet them they'll ask whose holy soul is this and they will introduce the soul this is such and such son and daughter of such and such and they will be called by their good deeds and they will be introduced by their good deeds and he and she was known in the world with such and such best name the modest the honest the believer the God-fearing the pious the pure so they will be names and then they will carry the soul to the heaven and they will request the door to be opened the door will be opened for this pure holy soul the angels of the first sky will escort the soul to the next and the process will continue till they, they reach the seventh sky and then Allah will order register the name of my soul in Iliyin what is Iliyin? Allah says وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا إِلِّيُّونَ كِتَابٌ مَرْقُومٌ how can you comprehend what Iliyin is? It is an office, it is a record place in the Jannah. Allah will say, register the name of my slave in Iliyin and return it to the earth and its body. And the soul will then be, be recorded and the soul will then be placed in Iliyin, which is a place in the gardens of Jannah. Because you know, every Thursday, and every Monday, the person, the good deeds, the virtues, the pious activities, the God-fearing activities and worships the person used to do, they used to be all presented to Allah and then they used to be saved and recorded and protected in Iliyin. So now, where this person had deposited all his good deeds, the soul will also be collected with the good deeds in Iliyin. So this is all how it will be about the events of a believer and the events of the death of a disbeliever. And the next stage is of the grave, the cover. The torments of the grave or the happenings of the grave have not been narrated in Quran. In the verses of Quran, we do come across a very detailed explanation and narration of the happenings and of the scenes of the Day of Judgment, of the Doomsday, of the, of the time of accountability, of the people passing over the bridge of Sarat, of the hell, its torments about the Jannah and the bounties and blessings and the conditions and the scenes. But in no verse or in no chapter or in no surah of Quran do we go and do we find the narration or explanation of the events or of the torments or of the happenings of the grave. Like all that is mentioned in Quran is Surah Abasa verse number 21 Allah says فَأَقْبَرَهُ that he was made in the grave the person was made in the grave a, per a grave was made for the person and then Allah mentions in Surah Al-Mu'minun verse 100 وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَسُونَ And behind them there is a barrier until the day when they will be resurrected or when they will be raised again. Or from 
certain verses like verses in the Surah Mu'minun or certain other surahs which inshallah I'll be mentioning in some other place indirectly do we derive the concept of the torments after death the torments after death before the day of judgment as Allah mentioned in this verse of Surah Mu'minun that uh, Surah Mu'min that Pharaoh after his death will be presented to torments so now there has been after the death of Pharaoh there was no judgment there was no accountability his deeds had not been weighed and so there was no accountability and there was no result of him being uh, permitted to or uh, asked to or thrown to the hell so if after death he was subjected to torment and it was mentioned that he was subjected to torments and punishments then this indirectly from this indirectly it is assumed that this will be the torments after death and this would be the alim -e barsakh this would be a barrier after death and because of this barrier the people passing on in the journey of hereafter will keep on moving forwards from one stage to the other but they will not be able to come back because there's a barrier after death a barrier between the person who is deceased or who is departed from the world and him coming back into the world there's a barrier but but by the prophets sallallahu alaihi wasallam's words we find a complete and a total narration of the minutest of details regarding the happenings the condition the conversations the the torments and the bounties of the grave we find a total and an absolute and a complete and a comprehensive narration from the words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the grave prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has warned us of the torments of grave he was like just the hadith we just i narrated that has a bira bin azib radiyallahu ta'ala who reported in ibn maja that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the companions had reached the graveyard for a funeral but the grave since it was not prepared they sat down and the companions sat around him and he said what oh my brothers oh my brothers make some preparation for it make some preparation for this house and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it is a house of insects it is a house of worms it is a house of mud keep in remembrance and make preparation prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been reported by hazrat usman radhiyallahu ta'ala and who in tirmizi that he said i have not seen a place more horrifying a place more horrifying and harassing and more terrifying other than the grave and then hazrat asma bin dibakar radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i have been revealed that you people will be put to trial like the trial of the jal that is the antichrist or resembling like the trial of the antichrist and then prophet sallam said you people will be put to the trial in graves annakum tuftanuna fi qaburikum you people will be put to trial in the graves and that is why prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sought protection against the tortures of the grave hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala and her reports in nisai the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam supplicated in these words Allahumma rabbi jibril wa mikail wa rabbi israfil a'uzu bika min harrin nari wa min adhab al qabr O Allah O oh my Allah you are the you are the sustainer of mikail and jibril and israfil the sustainer of all of them i seek your shelter against the heat of fire and the tortures in the grave 
Hazrat Anas radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said had I not feared that you will you will stop burying your dead bodies and you will abandon to bury your dead bodies <coughs> you will abandon to bury your dead bodies I would have prayed to Allah to make you hear the sounds due to the torments in the grave and that is what Prophet Sallallahu said. Hazrat Abu Zar Ghaffari Razillahu Ta'ala who reports in Ibn Majah that he said, Indeed, I see what you do not, and I hear what you do not. Had you known what I know, had you seen what I saw, had you heard what I hear, you would have laughed less and you would have wept more. You wouldn't have had any enjoyment with your wives in your beds and you would go out to the forests and the plains seeking the shelter of Allah. And this is why Hazrat Abu Zar radiallahu ta'ala and who used to cry and say, I wish I had been a tree which would have been cut down and finished off. And these sounds and this sounds and voices of the yelling and howling and shrieking due to the torments of the grave prophet sallallahu has been reported to say that all the creatures of the world they hear the voices of the crying of the people of the grave due to torments of the grave except the humans and the jinns other than these two all the creatures of this world they can hear the sounds because of the torments of the grave when the person is given in charge of the grave is laid in the grave and soil is put over it the the grave itself talks to the person itself addresses the person in a detailed Hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abu Sayyid Qudri radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Tirmzi Hazrat Abu Sayyid Qudri radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Tirmzi that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if you were to keep much in remembrance of death which is the cutter off of player it would distract you from what I see keep in remembrance death for a day does not come a day does not come to the grave without it saying that I am the house of exile I am the house of solitude I am the house of dust I am the house of worms and when a believer dies the grave says to him Welcome, Maruhaba, welcome and greeting. You are indeed the dearest to me of all those who walked upon me. I have been given charge of you today and you have come to me and you will see how I treat you and you will see how I treat you. And then saying this, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he drew off his hands and he said, and then the grave will open up to him. The grave will open up and expand for him. As far as the door to paradise will be open for him. But when a very wicked, evil doing person or a disbeliever or a hypocrite is buried, the grave says to him, no welcome and no greeting to you. You are the most hateful. You are the most hateful to me of those who walk upon me i have been giving i have now i have been waiting for you and i have now been given charge of you today and you have come to me and you will see how i will treat you now and saying this prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he put the fingers of one hand in the others and crossing them and he said and then the grave will get so tight the walls of the grave will come so close and the grave will get so tight and it will press on him till the ribs are crushed and ribs of one side will cross the ribs of the other side. 
and then Prophet indicated he told that 70 dragons will be put in charge of him and each dragon will be of the nature that if if one of them was to breathe on the earth it would produce no crops as long as the world endured and they will bite and scratch him till he is brought for the day of resurrection and then finally Prophet Sallallahu added grave is one of the gardens of paradise Riyazul Jannah garden of paradise for some and it may be the pits of hell from someone so this is all what happens when the person is addressed by the grave himself and then in the grave as narrated by Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in Tirmizi and multiple other hadiths multiple other hadith of the prophet sallallahu that when the person is buried that a person deceased when after the funeral prophet sallallahu said that after the funeral when the person is buried in the grave and his relatives are walking back the person in the grave the deceased will hear the sounds of the shoes of his relatives walking back then at the same time two angels two angels of the grave their name prophet sallallahu has told as munkir and nakir they come to him and in multiple ahadith like hazrat bira reporting in musnad ahmad and hazrat Hazrat uh, Abu Huraira reporting in Tarimzi and Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu reporting in Tabrani if I gather all the versions of Ahadith the information Prophet Sallallahu has given us about this Munkir or Naki will be what? that Prophet Sallallahu said their eyes will be blue they will have huge big blue eyes like the size of a big copper pot and their teeth will be like the size and the shape of the horns of a cow and they will be digging the earth with their teeth and they will be they will be wrangling the earth with their big lips and they will be trampling the earth with their long hair and their voice will be their voice will be like the thunder of the clouds like the thundering of the clouds and they will shout and they will yell and they will ask him to sit down they will make him sit down in the grave just stop and think the person has just left the world the sorrow the distress of leaving the home the world the relatives the anxiety the terror the horror of being all by himself in the darkness dark dingy solitary confinement of the grave and then these extraterrestrial this this horrible angels coming up and making the person sit up and then they will ask three questions three questions man rabbuka Man Rasuluka, Madinuka. Who was your sustainer? Who did you consider as your sustainer? Who did you consider as the messenger of Allah? And which religion did you adopt? What was your code of life? What was your mode of ethics? Which religion? Which prophet did you follow? And whose followers were you? In which religion did you belong to? These were the three questions. These will be the three questions that person will be asked. What horror, what terror, what solitude? And the three questions, remember, these three questions, the person will answer not just by memorizing the answers to these questions. 
it's not just possible that we just try to cram up up and we just try to memorize the questions assuming and expecting that once we remember the questions we'll be able to answer them right no it's only the person it is only going to be the person who lives who strives who struggles in the life according to the commandments of Allah according to the orders of Quran according to the teachings of the verses of Quran that a person will be able to answer the question man rabbuka with the correct answer it will be only the person who obeyed what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had brought what he had taught the teachings of the sunnah the teachings of the hadith if a person accepted them were not averse to them were not rejecting them then only will he have the capacity or will he be able to answer this question in the correct answer and only and only the person who had made who had made the code of life and the mode of ethics and the teachings of islam as his lifestyle then he would be only he would be the person to answer the question in the right manner so now what will happen then what will a believer answer and what will be a disobedient person's answer and what will be the repercussions of the answers then prophet sallallahu alaihi says in a uh, hazrat bin rabin azib radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in musnad ahmad and abu daud that prophet sallallahu alaihi then said the two angels will come in the grave of the believer they will make him or her sit up and then they will ask who was your sustainer man rabbuka the believer will say allah is my sustainer the angels will then ask what is your religion the believer will say my religion is islam nahnu lahu muslimun then they will ask who was the person sent to you the believer will say he was the prophet of allah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam then the angels will ask how did you know all this the believer will say i read the book of allah and i had faith in it and i bore testimony to it all the answers right all the answers right three out of three a plus what will happen now these are the words i'm adding on to explain the situation then prophet sallallahu alaihi said a caller calls from the sky there will be a voice from the heavens and it will it will be said it will be said my slave said the truth bring for her or him a bed from jannah and a dress from jannah and open a door to the side of jannah to let air and scent enter the grave from jannah and then the grave will be widened to unlimited stretches and then prophet as him said the person will be asked to sleep like a new bride sleeps and then the person will be raised will be woken up twice once in the morning and once in the evening and then from the window of the jannah the person will be shown that that person's position and rewards and status and palaces that the person will be rewarded with as bounties of jannah and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there will appear before him a fair faced person wearing a beautiful dress with a fine scent and the person will say glad tidings of rest and peace for you this is the day you were promised and the believer will ask who are you how beautiful your face is you have what blessings and good fortune for me and the person will say i am your noble deeds and then the believer prays oh allah oh allah resurrect soon so that i may meet my family this was this is all what will happen to the believer in the grave this was this was all the narration of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for the grave of a believer the graves which we have seen the graves which we have visited the graves which we have touched 
the graves by the foot end of which we have stood the graves to whom we've handed over our near and dear ones this will be the narration of all the graves of the believers and then what for the non believer what will be his place and what will be the happenings in the grave of a non believer when the person will be asked the person the non believer the transgressor the hypocrite the polytheist in the grave will be raised by this munkir and nakir and will be asked the same questions who was your sustainer who do you believe as your sustainer manrapuka and the person will say i do not know and then the next question what is your religion and what do you think about the messenger of allah the person will say when the angel will say who is that person muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would say i said i don't know i'm not i'm not actually aware of the actual reality i just said what the people said so the person will be told neither neither you understood the quran nor did you read the quran and then the grave and then when the person will obviously none of the answers will be correct then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said then there will be there will be a cry from the heaven and it will be announced and it will be ordered give give this person a bed out of hell fire and a dress out of hell fire and open up and open up a window or a door or a hole in the grave from hell and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said angels angels for punishment will be imposed on him on the person angels of punishment and angels which will be torturing the person they will be blind and they will be deaf and they will have hammers and they will have maces and they will they will beat the person between his ears with these maces and the person will cry the person will howl the person will yell the person will shriek and all the sound will be heard by all the creatures of the world other than the human beings and the jinns and amongst all this once in the morning and once in the evening this person will be made to see and witness his position in the hell his position in the hell will be shown to him so these will be the conditions the happenings and the punishments and the torments of the person of a person who is a non believer in his grave the bounties of the grave will be for the believer as allah says in surah nahl verse 32 allazina yatawaffahum almalaikatu tayyibina yaquluna salamun alaykum udkhulul jannata bima kuntum ta'malun those angels who cause die who cause death to whom to the believers when they do good they will say salamun alaykum peace be unto you enter the gardens because of what you used to do and what will be the grave like all open all comfortable well lit like the moonlight and then scents and perfumes and cool air from the channa flowing in blowing in and the person sleeping with a bed of channa with the dress of channa with all the comforts all the bounties all the luxuries no distress no solitude quran itself will come in the form of a beautiful young man to give company to give company and the grave has a tabu hurairah radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said indeed the believer lives in a grave as if in a fresh green garden which is widened for the person 70 hands and it will be lit like the light of a full moon and then hazrat abu ibn umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in muslim that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that when anyone dies the person is made to witness 
the person is made to witness her abode day and night that is the position in hell or paradise will be shown if the person deserved paradise he will be made to witness the palaces of paradise and if the person deserves hell then he will be made to witness his abode in the hell and told this is your residence where Allah will send you after resurrection and for the person who disobeyed there will be scorpions as big as mules and there will be snakes as big as camels and each snake will have 70 heads and each head will have 70 mouths to sting and to bite with and the poison of both of these scorpions and snakes would be such that the effect of it would last for 40 years and what noble actions will be a shield against the torments of grave if I sum up lot of words of the Prophet as has been reported by Hazrat Abu Huraira in Ibn Habban and again by Hazrat Abu Huraira in Tabrani then if I sum up the whole things that when the angels of torment or the angels which are going to punish the person in the grave they will be blind and they will be deaf but when the angels will come on the person there are going to be certain deeds which are going to stop them from punishing this person and these deeds would be what a summary of two or three words of the Prophet Wasallam is that when these angels will come from the right side the Salah will stand up the Salah this person used to offer you will stand up and they will say the Salah will say there is no passage from here that is we won't let you pass and we won't let you torture this person then the angels when they would come from the foot end then it will be what his steps to the mosque would come to rescue then when the angels will come from the left side then zakah the zakah the right of Allah on our wealth and our riches and gold and silver the person had paid the zakah will stand the zakat will stand on the left and will say there's no passage from this side and when they will come from the front then the charity the charity on top of other than more than zakat supererogatory money beyond zakat which the person had paid as charity in the path of Allah that will stop and that will not let them torture the person from the front and when the angels will then approach or try to approach from the head end then Quran will stop then the Holy Quran will ward them off the Quran which the person read the Quran which the person understood the Quran which the person acted upon the Quran which the person taught and learnt the best of you is he who learns and teaches the Quran to others so this Quran will ward up they, the Quran will ward up these angels and then we know that the surah on uh, Surah, Surah Mulk Hazrat Abdullah bin Masood who reports in uh, by Hakim the Prophet said Surah Al-Mulk is a hindrance from the torments of grave and Prophet used to recite it before he used to go off to bed so the recitation of Surah Al-Mulk and you know what Surah Al-Mulk is a uh, a surah of Quran which has a very strong and a very clear cut and a very powerful reminder of the message for the preparation and for the fear of hereafter so a person who is going to narrate or recite Surah Mulk every night before going off to sleep is obviously going to be reciting those words and getting the remembrance of death and having the remembrance of hereafter will obviously be a very big source of reforming of repentance of forgiveness and of the desire to prepare or to make provisions for the hereafter and then we also know that Hazrat Rashid bin Saad who reports in the Sai that the martyrs 
will be uh, they will be saved they will be saved from number one the torments of the hell and the torments of the grave so <coughs> These are the noble deeds which are going to help the people save them from the torments of the grave. And then in the end, I would like to recite the supplications which we learn from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Rabbana waqina azab nari Rabbana waqina azab nari Rabbana waqina azab al-qabri Allahumma anis wahshati kabri Allahumma anis wahshati kabri Allahumma anis wahshati kabri Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min harrin nari wa min adhab al kabri Rabbana Rabbana la tuzi qulubana bada iz khadaytana wa hablana min latunka rahma innaka anta wahab Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin summa amin